It is indeed Six Sounds Radio, and we're joined in the studio this afternoon by Mike Pedrick. Um, he looks a bit shocked. You can't see this obvious on the radio, but he has got the Maltesers in front of him. We're going to do a Maltesers challenge in a minute or two. We've got Rob Leggar as well. He's a Stoke fan. Uh, hello, Rob. You okay? Fine, thank you. Fine. Yeah. Are you up for this? I am. I'm just counting Maltesers now. Yeah. <laughs> Got to, got to eat. No oh, cheating. We've got really? adjudicators. We've got Karen from Sainsbury's. We've got Lucas. He's going to be counted. So we're going to do that in a minute. But I've got a couple more questions for you, Mike, before you do this. Right. <laughs> First of all, um, you got four England caps. Uh, what yeah. was it like to turn out for your country? Because like you're in, um, you're a local lad. You're in the youth teams uh, at Stoke. It took you a couple of years to get your debut, and then not so long after that, you played for England. Yeah, it's something. Uh, obviously, when you're a kid, you set your goals and. The first thing is to get signed on apprentice and then a professional and then uh, once you do that you, you want to get in the first team and uh, once you gain your first team position as number one choice uh, your next goal is obviously to do the best you can to make an international class player and uh, Alf Ramsey was the manager at the time and uh, he chose me to be in the under 23s when I was 22 years of age and I was with him for two years. He used to run the under 23s in them days as well as the first team. Mm -hmm. And I was with him for two years and gradually breaking into the England squad. I eventually made my debut in Portugal. And then he picked the squad for the seven international games that summer. And uh, next thing I was coming from training one day and I heard he got the sack. He was on the radio. And uh, I just couldn't believe it because he was a great man. Yeah. And uh, Joe Mercer took over then at that time. And, uh, he was all Liverpool this and Liverpool that, and uh, it didn't really work out with him. So I, I made three more caps, and then he, he brought Alec Lings into the squad, <coughs> and uh, that was it, that was me done. Yeah. And then after that, Don Revy took over, and uh, obviously I always, I always had to score or sent off against the lead, so I don't think ever, <laughs> well, it was one of Don Revy's favourite players. <laughs> so that was the end of my international career, really, oh, in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah, and he of course went on to play for Everton as well. Mm. Uh, was it like to play one of the bigger teams in the country? Yeah, I was Gordon time, Lee's. I yeah, I was Gordon Lee's first signing when Gordon Lee took over the ex Valeman and um, uh, that was in the January of '77 when things weren't working out at Stoke. And uh, first buy, that was his first buy, and we, we did quite well really. We got to the FA Cup semi-final and uh, shot up the league. And the season after that, we were top of the league with uh, Notts Forest all season, and then Liverpool pipped us for third, uh, second spot that season and uh, knocked us out the the uh, FA Cup semis as well. With again, not too good of a referee on that occasion, Clive Thomas. He, he did us in uh, added time, uh, just allowed a third goal, uh, which would have taken us through to the final. And uh, we we weren't in it the replay really, so. Uh, good memories and, and not yeah. so good memories. So that, that's the ups and downs, the, the roller coaster ride of football. Yeah. Was he somebody you liked in the middle, Clive Thomas? He was a bit of a legend, wasn't he, in the refereeing world? Well, a legend for making all the wrong decisions, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> reputation, <laughs> doesn't he? Yeah, very much so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 